హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ వెల్కమ్ టు పొలిటికల్ సైన్స్ వెస్టర్న్ పొలిటికల్ ఫిలోసఫీ సెమిస్టర్ ఫైవ్ కోర్ పేపర్ ఎలెవెన్ హియర్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ది ఐడియల్ స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ ప్లాటో ఇన్ హిస్ బుక్ ది రిపబ్లిక్ హీ హెస్ క్లియర్లీ డిస్క్రైబ్డ్ వాట్ షుడ్ బి an ideal state what should be the functions of an ideal state so this uh, uh, book the republic carries his philosophical thought relating to the state and he has been influenced by pythagoras socrates parmenides and uh, Heraclitus, the great uh, Western philosophers. Basing on their ideology and combining his ideas in his book, The Republic, he has very clearly published the main features of an ideal state. How should an ideal state be? So here he has mentioned certain points. i will go uh, one by one so catch the features number one philosopher king he said the king must be a philosopher means two points he focused intellect and wisdom the king must have a philosophical background knowledge experience so he said he must not be just political above politics he must have the experience of feelings of others and must know the correct principles should be adopted for his subjects It means peoples citizens which he called as rule of philosophy what rule of philosophy right and the second point he focused on is equality of sexes sex male and female plato in his book republic his idea is very good that uh, man and woman must be treated equal in the society together they develop the society will develop and the state will be strong good idea but naturally it may not be possible because nature has divided the society in the form of male and female objection came in later words but his idea was very fine here to build uh, an ideal state the citizens should not be classified on the basis of sex in exercise of their rights liberties performing their responsibilities accountability towards administration and towards the state if any such discrimination is there it is the violence of justice he said and a society where justice is violated it's no more a an ideal society or state so he pointed on this third point is regulated education see according to plato education is the backbone around which all other you know developments depends well being of the people depends on education therefore he said that the education must be under the control of state because state is an impartial entity no self it can set the curriculum or syllabus for perfect education which can bring welfare to the people the third most important feature of his ideal state is functional specialization and what is this functional specialization as you know there are many types of people in the society but they are specialized for special action work 
activities. So here he divided society into three functional entities. One, the guardian, two, the soldier, three, the producer. And he bestowed or set the target, uh, I mean, task for each section. The first one, the guardian, must be the ruler. He must rule the people. That means here he referred to the king or the administrators. The second one is the soldiers, the protectors of the territory and the people. And the third one is the producer, that means the farmers who can feed the millions to live inside the state boundary. So three special groups or we can say entities he has prepared inside the state and responsibilities must be distributed according to their attitude, aptitude and skill. Then the state can be an ideal state. The fifth point he focused to make a state ideal state, justice should be underlined. There is no principle of justice, then the state can never be called as an ideal state. That's why whenever he classified the society or state into three groups, he said, on the basis of functional specialization, justice must be emphasized. Okay? In order to establish harmony in the state. In his theory of justice, he categorized three types of justice traditional theory, radical theory pragmatic theory, in almost all the say, theories he has said one thing that justice must not be, you know, natural and permanent, rather it should be based on the customs, traditions and, uh, you know, conventions and it must be congenial to the people, the society. The next most important feature of communism, Plato, Plato's communism, which was later on followed by Mussolini. So this communism thought, he says that equal treatment to all in the society, it is almost all relating to justice only. But in administration, he said the king or the philosopher, or the philosopher king must pay attention to the welfare of the people basing on equality. For this reason, he was against the accumulation of private property and communism of wives or property. The main motive of his support to communism is to make administration free from corruption and self-centeredness. Yeah, communism is providing equal status to the citizens of the nation which he uh, demanded here. And domestication of children is the last point. It's another important feature. He said that children born of temporary union between the male and female, two agents, and he is the product of, or she is the product of the state. So, Children must be reared, it must, they must be produced by the people, no doubt, men and women, but must be reared by the state and the state must set the goal of an individual born child according to his, you know, skill, right. State must educate him and prepare him if he can be a guardian philosopher or he can be a soldier or he can be a teacher or doctor whatever may be. State must take these responsibilities. So they must be domesticated by state. The citizens are not 
the, the children are not the properties of the parents, they are the properties of the state, said by Plato. And the last point is censorship of art and literature. Here Plato rejected art and literature. He said that these two things may not help to build a strong state. It is danger when immoral ideas of art and literature are applied in the society. They becomes the barrier in the unity and integrity of the state. That's why he rejected that immoral ideas of art and literature. So he was in favor of censorship of art and literature. So these are all around seven most important features of his uh, ideal state. Later on it was criticized that in realistic it is not possible. It is an utopia means these ideas cannot be translated into life and some said it is anti-democratic and some said it is communism. Provocating communism is not good for the health of the state. Some others said it is not dynamic.